Junk Food Dinner 347. This week on Junk Food Dinner, all bros are created equal. First, Cronenberg's thriller Dead Ringers, where the psychology of twins is explored. Then, after twin boys are left by their mob papa, the barbarian twins take charge in 1994's Twin Sinners. And finally, in 2012's Enemy, Jake Gyllenhaal plays a man who grows obsessive over his doppelganger. And twins. Welcome back to Junk Food Dinner. The next movie we're going to be taking a look at on the show this evening is Twin Sitters from 1994, also known as just The Babysitters, uh, depending on where and when you saw this. This is a movie uh, featuring Peter Paul and David Paul, better known as the Barbarian Brothers. When we uh, decided to do the Twins theme uh, earlier last month, uh, it was no doubt in my mind that I was picking a Barbarian Brothers movie because they are the one and only twins as far as I'm concerned. Uh, And ever since we did Double Trouble on the show, I've been itching to do more um barbarian brothers stuff so was i going to do think big was i going to do the barbarians from 87 no what i went with was the follow-up to double trouble the r-rated uh action movie their kid friendly uh home alone style film twin sitters uh this movie is written and directed by john paragon uh who you might remember as jombie in Pee Wee's Playhouse, a, a, a frequent collaborator with Paul Rubens. Um, he was also uh, uh, one of uh, Fletcher's kids in UHF, and he was the writer of El- Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and uh, the uh, the proprietor of Paragon Video, if you are a, uh, a VHS fan out there. Uh, but he is a cool dude, and he kind of brings a lot of those sensibilities to this movie. Um, this is a, like I said, this is a kid's movie. Uh, I had actually never seen this one before, um, but I had heard interesting things about it and seen a lot of wacky, uh, uh, images from the movie on, uh, on, on the internet. So I figured now's the time to do it. So this movie, uh, concerns these two barbarian brothers. They work at a Italian restaurant. Uh, they get fired for being, basically bumbling three stooges as goofballs and they try to get a loan from the bank the loan officer played by paragon himself uh turns them down and uh they don't know how they're going to start their own restaurant uh but then they are chilling in the park uh when a guy um who has some like ties to the mob or something george lazenby plays like a gangster who wants to dump toxic waste to this trucking company um and he uh gets on the bad side of george lazenby and lazenby basically puts a hit out on him uh so he's in the park meeting with some guy from like the the da's office and they're looking to kind of work out a plea bargain where he's going to rat out uh, Lazenby and his crew for all this illegal dumping and drug smuggling that he's doing and as he's doing it a, a, a group of hoods uh, comes through with a bunch of shotguns and just you know, opens fire on a, a park full of people and uh, the Barbarian Brothers spring into action saving a bunch of kids and uh, saving uh, the guy um, Frank as he's known Frank Hillhurst of Hillhurst Trucking and uh, that impresses him so much that he uh, he hires these guys to look after his two nephews who has been living with him since their parents died, I guess, six months ago. And uh, as you can tell, it turns wacky real quick as these uh, these barbarian brothers have to babysit these two twin kids. So we got double the twins in this episode or in this movie. Um, the barbarian brothers if you've never seen double trouble, you might not be familiar with them. Um, but they are these two twin brothers who are bodybuilders. They've got long hair and a very distinct manner of dress. Uh, we saw it a little bit on display in double trouble with the half shirts and the sweatshirts ripped in 
and a half and stuff. Uh, but it is over the fucking top <laughs> in this movie. Uh, they wear some clothes in this that honestly, I don't even really understand. Like they're that next level. Um, like one of the guys, he shows up the first day on the job and he's wearing like this hat with a bird and a bird's nest on it. And like, 80 bandanas tied around his arm and like a telephone cord wrapped around him for some, I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The half shirts are out of control. There's one scene where a dude's like wearing like a half shirt and suspenders and like a Nazi like hat and like police badges. And like, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like I cannot even really adequately describe the manner of dress, which these guys dress in. If, if you have a, a chance, just Google image search it. I mean, I, there were probably some pimps or drag queens watching this movie like, tone it down, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> this is out of control. Uh, yeah. there, well, there's one yeah. There's one scene where one of the twins wears in his like front pocket rather than like where you would put a handkerchief. He has like yeah. three troll dolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, they're going out of their way to to dress as ridiculous as possible in this for... I guess comedic effect, but I, I have a feeling that's not too far off from what these guys wore in their day to day life. Um, th- everything about their personality in this is ridiculous. Like I said, they're kind of really hamming it up and doing kind of like a Three Stooges, like James Cagney kind of like bit where they're, uh, I don't know, just they're always kind of like goofing around and they drive this ridiculous monster truck. And when they drive up to the house, you get a chance to hear a rap song that is done by the Barbarian Brothers themselves, uh, which is ridiculous, and they play that over the credits as well. Um, The two twin brothers in this movie um, are the little boys, are played by uh, Christian Cousins and Joseph Cousins, who, besides being two little Mark Fredo doppelgangers, if you've ever seen (laughs) photos of Fredo when he was a little boy, uh, I think you'd probably most recognize them from either uh, Kindergarten Cop or Critters 3 um, as little kids. And they're just little assholes. Uh, They, of course, try to make life difficult for the Barbarian Brothers until they both, you know, they find a bond over uh, being twins and being misunderstood. Um, And then, of course, you know, there's a climactic thing where these gangsters eventually come looking for the kids and try to, you know, kidnap them. And the Barbarian Brothers, again, spring into action. There's also a subplot where the boys have a... Uh, in-home tutor played by Rena Sofer, who the two Barbarian brothers instantly fall in love with and both uh, court simultaneously. Um, there's also some housekeepers around the house that uh, play up for comedic effect. There's a black maid who won the anti-NAACP uh, award for uh, setting black people back several years in her role in this. Uh, there's also a British butler who is like uh, again comic relief in a lot of things and uh, but he is like a double agent working for the bad guys and uh, like I said there's some interesting cameos uh, because it's John Paragon he's got a lot of people that you probably remember from Pee Wee's Playhouse uh, popping up here some of the like the Del Rubio triplets are at the end of this movie Um, there's just not like name people but various people pop up you're like oh i remember them from peewee's playhouse uh paul bartell uh, is in uh, uh, an early scene in the movie uh with his wife uh susanna kent who was on peewee's playhouse um and yeah it's this movie uh for being a kid's movie um i actually found surprisingly fun i there's a lot of uh kids movies that we do on the show and they don't hold up for adult audiences and i don't think this is really one that's going to blow any adult audiences away by any means but it does feel just kind of like a toned down version of what they were doing in double trouble um and there is some fairly adult stuff in it despite the fact that it you know is it's rated pg-13 so it's not you know totally a kid's movie uh you get a few shits and dickheads in there um and, you know, there's some violence and things like that. So um, I don't know. I, I thought this movie was fun. It's it's certainly stupid, um, as you would expect from a Barbarian Brothers kids movie uh, from 94. But I think there's enough uh, charm 
from the Barbarian Brothers who, you know, despite their ridiculous manner of dress or maybe because of it and their over-the-top hammy, um, you know, way of performing, I, I don't know. I, I find these guys uh, endlessly charming, uh, <laughs> which is weird because on paper they seem anything but like these kind of like, you know, obsessed with themselves, muscle-bound, bodybuilding uh, bad joke making douchebags like they they don't seem like the type of people that would would be uh, intriguing but for some reason uh, I, I like them I think they're fun dudes I'd like to party with them um, and as a result I, I like to party with this movie um, it's not one that I'm going to go back and watch a lot but uh, you know for a fun entertaining uh, just kind of what the fuck is going on kind of movie uh, I think this is a good time but what did you guys think of twin sitters. I love this movie. <laughs> All right. I like these barbarian twins a lot from, uh, from that last movie we watched. I'd never seen this or any of their other stuff, but I was very excited to get into this, uh, knowing that they would be involved. Um, there's a lot of stupid, silly, goofy, uh, jokes in this, like the kind that I really respond to. Uh, like there's, a scene where like the twins who were like uh very much like Italian stereotypes in a lot of ways in this movie. Uh like they always talk about lasagna and stuff. And that's funny. And uh but yeah, they're like hanging out with like their parents or whatever and like their mom's like, Hey, uh, you know, you you on the left, you always were um you always had a temper. And then he like slams his fists down on the dinner table and he goes, I do not and I think that <laughs> jokes like that are funny to me. Uh, that's goofy. I think that's great. Um, there's a scene where they're in the park, just hanging out and like being upset that they can't get alone. And then some gangsters start shooting up the park, and then they start uh, collecting the babies in the park to save them. And that was a lot more heroic than the scene from Man of Steel, where Superman <laughs> saved nobody. Uh, so I respect that. Um, at one point, one of the twins says to a guy, hey, nice hair. Is that a super cut? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's funny. Uh, the little twins, who I, I do remember that kid from Kindergarten Cop. He was like the main kid. Uh, they try to kill the barbarian twins at one point. Like, they just straight up try to electrocute them to death. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's weird. They kind of gloss over that. But uh, that's cool. Um, when they're in school... The teacher asks the barbarian twins, what is a dangling participle, which is like an English thing, like a grammar thing. But they say that's what happens when you've run out of toilet paper. That's a very funny joke. Uh, the butler looks like Ron Paul, kind of, in his younger days. <laughs> yeah, um, I can see that. I, during this movie, I was like kind of wondering if any... Like, I know that, like, standards for beauty change and, like, the 80s were definitely, like, these dudes' heyday, like, being, like, kind of buff dudes with long, dark hair. Um, but, like, are there any ladies today? Like, are there still any ladies alive who would look at the Barbarian Twins? Like, ladies our age or younger who look at the Barbarian Twins and go, that's a good-looking man. Good-looking lo good <laughs> couple of men. Because, like, the maid gets real horny for them in this movie and stuff and, like, I don't know. I don't know if this is like anybody's like aesthetic anymore. Where like they're like, yeah, these muscle bound dudes with like goofy half shirts and. Well, the the nineties I think were a decade where Brett Michaels was still considered attractive. So yeah, I mean, all bets are off. We were into some weird shit back then. Well, Brett Michaels was attractive well into the two thousands. I don't know if you've ever seen Rock <laughs> of Love, but there's ladies fighting for him. Yeah, fair point. Um, there's one hilarious part in this movie. Where, after the twins start bonding with the other twins, they do this thing that I love. It's probably one of the funniest things that can happen. The funniest sight gags in the world. Where, in order to pass... Like, they do this in a montage. Like, there's not even a reason for it. But in order to pass the little kids off as adults, they get on the shoulders of the barbarian twins and then put a trench coat on them. <laughs> and, yeah. and, like, fake mustaches. <laughs> And I think that's, like, the funniest shit in the world. Uh, I always wanted to do that with one of my friends in high school. Like, I always wanted to put one of them on my shoulders and then, like, go to see a rated R movie. Because it would be so funny for, like, a 12-foot-tall person to come in 
<laughs> and say they needed, and there wouldn't even be any reason to sneak in. We were both uh, of age to see rated R movies. But anyway, that was my life's goal in like eighth grade or something, ninth grade. And so I'm glad they do it in this movie. Yeah, I love that montage scene. There's a scene where the four of them, the Barbarian Brothers and the two little kids, are all wearing Halloween masks and playing Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And that looks amazing. Yeah, I like that part. Um, things near the end kind of get weird where like a bunch of like racial stereotypes like just start showing up. <laughs> yeah, in twin form. <laughs> yeah, in twin form. You think anyway, like... Uh, Two Asian dudes show up as like ninjas, and then two black dudes show up, and they say like, "Hey, you need to buy a need to buy a watch. I got hot watches here." <laughs> and then, and then like the little kids go, "Hey, you found some more twins." And then the black dudes and the Asian dudes go, "No, nah, we just look alike." <laughs> like, what kind of <laughs> shit is this movie? Uh, a very rude joke that does not stand up. Um. But yeah, I think this movie's like super fun. Uh it's just super goofy. There's a lot of dumb jokes. The Barbarian twins are fucking awesome. Uh like I just love them so much. They're so funny in this and it's like part it's like partly that they're like really charismatic and good at what they do, but it's like also partly that they're really bad at what they do and that makes it better. It's uh like this fine line between genuine and ironic uh, appreciation for what these guys do. Um, but yeah, this is great. I love it. Yeah, I uh, I don't really have a huge history with these Barbarian Brothers, but uh, like you guys, I also enjoyed them in Double Trouble. Um, I will say it, it looks to me like, and maybe this is just me, but it looks to me like they've done a lot more than two years worth of living uh, since 1992's Double Trouble. Um <laughs> uh, they look like they, they've had some some hard times. Uh, it looks kind of like a, a late period Corey Haim uh, movie sometimes, mm-hmm. if you, if you know what I'm saying. But I do like their uh, their general enthusiasm. You know, I, I like the way that they say restaurant. <laughs> I think that's really fun. <laughs> and uh, once in a while, it's it's rare, but once in a while, I feel like you do see a glimpse of like some genuine acting talent from these uh, twins, like. And I don't know, maybe he really was offended, but there's this one scene where uh, a kid with a soccer ball calls one of the twins a dickhead, and there's the, just this look on his face of, like, really being offended that I thought was actually uh, kind of charming and, and endeared me to these uh, weird twins. Um, I, there's a lot to like about these guys. I, I agree with you that it's kind of that blend of them knowing what they're doing and, and not knowing what they're doing that makes it so uh, interesting and, and surprising. Um, I also appreciate their commitment to gender uh, androgyny. You know, like there's some definite pioneering moves in androgynous clothing in this, you know. Um, and it, it gets real confusing towards the end where, <clears throat> you know, they have long hair and um, large, round chest muscles th- throughout the entire picture. But it, it feels like it's only in the second half where they start uh, dressing up in, like, lady cop stripper outfits and stuff like that, <laughs> where it just like, it gets very confusing to me. Um, and, you know, I, I guess this is a kid's movie, but there's there's some kind of jacked up shit in this movie. Like, there's some imitatable violence, you know, like there's uh, one scene where uh, one of the twins takes one of those, like, I don't even know what you call it, one of those volleyballs on a rope that you would find on a kid's playground. Tetherball. Tetherball, yeah, swings at a, at a kid's face. And that's definitely something that uh, I don't think you want the kids of today to be learning from a movie. Um, there's, there's another scene where um, a dude gets stabbed and falls into a swimming pool and starts to drown, like, right in front of the two twins. And... They don't seem to care at all. They're just like, yeah, we're, we're going to go into the house and, and check on the kids. And I thought that was pretty weird and jacked up that they just walk away from this uh, dying man. And, um, you know, th- there's also one scene where the twin kids dad calls home to check in on them. Um, and he's doing so from an office building like he's sitting at like a conference table in an office. This fucking guy is choosing to call them on a cell phone over a landline with 1994's long distance rates. Like that seems like a financially <laughs> irresponsible move to me and, and not a good message right. for children, but he's got money to blow. I guess so. I guess he's that rich. Um, yeah. Like you said, a lot of good character actors in this. Cool to see George Lazenby. Uh, cool to see jo- John Paragon as an, um, as the loan officer in this. We also get Vic Trevino, uh, who played Ricardo from Pee Wee's Playhouse. Um, 
I also liked Barry Denon, uh, who played Thomas. He, uh, you might recognize him as uh, the guy who sits next to sits next to Jack uh, in his interview scene in The Shining. Uh, that's who that guy was, and he gets that uh, great scene in this with the photocopier, where he gets like assaulted uh, with a photocopier, which was. I thought pretty cool and and kind of a surprising um, object to find in a living room of a house in the 1990s. But I I guess rich people were different back then. And I I love that one old guy as well who can't stop smiling uh, while he's eating his lasagna, even while there's like a riot that breaks out around him. Uh, That guy was pretty cool. But yeah, a lot of fun faces in this. Um, I like the twins' um, ability to like mix up words and just say like dumb things all the time. Like at one point... Uh, when he won't get that loan at the bank, he just like exclaims, "That's scatological!" And I thought that was pretty fun. Yeah, um, M- mucus gracias. Yeah, yeah, mucus <laughs> gracias is a good one. Um, I like how the the chef lady is um, like real shocked that his trick is to add a shot of Dr Pepper to the tomato sauce that he's making, um, even though the bottle already has one of those like shot topper things screwed onto the top of it. So it's like, <laughs> come on, lady, how how shocked could you really be? Yeah, uh, this movie, uh, like Godzilla 1985, had some serious Dr. Pepper product placement in it. Yeah, which, I mean, I don't mind. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of that Dr. Pepper, so get it on screen. Uh, overall, the set, set decoration was actually pretty cool in this. You have uh, that kid's room I thought was pretty decent, you know, for like a rich kid's room. Uh, it's got like a Chucky doll in it in the background wearing a hat for some reason. Uh, there's some Godzilla toys in the background. And you get these close-ups of... The kids playing Super Nintendo, like you get like an actual close up of the screen of them playing Super Mario World for like 10 seconds, which seemed kind of unusual. I'm not sure if that was product placement, but seems strange to just see that with like all the, the Mario sound effects and everything just in a movie. Uh, but kind of cool. Uh, also, there's a cool old cardboard box of Mr. Bubble Bubble Bath. That was really fun to see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, this is. I don't know. It, it it is what it is. It's it's not a great movie. It's not trying to be a great movie, but I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's got a scene where a, a barbarian twin punches through the porthole of a ship, and that's I mean probably one of my favorite things to happen in any movie. Yeah, I, I like these these bros. I, I kind of wish that they had had a longer film career. It's it seems strange to me that they weren't a bigger hit. Like I feel like this is exactly what '80s and '90s kids would have understood. I mean, it's it's super dumb, but it, it hits that dumb, fun, sweet spot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I would never object to anybody popping this into a VCR. Will I play it again anytime soon? I, it, it, it's probably going to be a few years. I'm not really in a rush, but <laughs> I think yeah. it's worth it for that denim jacket with the troll dolls stuffed into it alone. And, you know, much like Chuck Norris, I'll, I'll say this is a hit. Nice. Yeah, there is uh, some Chuck Norris footage in here as well. Uh, which which I enjoyed, uh, but yeah, I, you know, like you said, it's a fun movie. Um, I do have to disagree with the tagline on the DVD. I, clearly, they're just trying to r- relate this back to Home Alone. But uh, the tagline is "You're never home alone when you're a twin." That's just patently false. Uh, <laughs> even if you're a twin, you can certainly still be home alone. Um, it's kind of disrespectful to twins, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless you're Jeremy Irons and dead ringers uh, yeah and even he was home alone sometimes watching you know lifestyles of the rich and famous probably shouldn't uh, have been though yeah uh but yeah if, if you like these barbarian brothers uh and you've seen double trouble don't count this one out just because it's a kid's movie it's it's still a lot of fun so check it out uh on that note we are going to take a quick break and when we come back we are going to get into our final conversation Thanks for visiting the JFD Video Store. We hope you enjoyed our burning hot takes on this week's selected movie. Check us out on iTunes or JunkFoodDinner.com for full episodes. The audio version contains three full-length reviews per week, topical news segments, and listener feedback. Great for long commutes, exercise, or surviving the impending apocalypse. Thanks to Chuck Linnington for the on-screen artwork. Email jfdpodcast at gmail.com or check us out on Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram, Tumblr or whatever else is going on. We're probably there and wanna hear from you. Until next time, keep washing them dishes.